This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Never let no one and nothing take away your joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Even though we go through difficulties and pressure and pain, yet we can have the joy of the Lord. That joy of the Lord is a joy, is a spiritual joy. It's a joy that we receive when we walk in union with the Holy Spirit. It is the joy of the Lord. It is a spiritual joy. It is independent of our circumstances and pressures and problems. And in this hour and time, you and I must learn to hold on tenaciously to the joy of the Lord and not let anyone or anything steal from you the joy of the Lord. If we can keep on rejoicing in the Lord, the Lord will surely bring us out of where we need to be. Joy of the Lord is our strength, is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength and my strength. The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. That means you rejoice unconditionally. The joy of the Lord is a spiritual joy. The Bible says, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. When he got the news from the disciples, how they went out and served and ministered and what happened, the Bible says the Lord rejoiced in the spirit. Then he said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for if we've hidden this from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto babes. So rejoice in the Lord. Let nothing, let no one take away that joy of the Lord. It is a joy we receive, the joy we have as we live our daily life in union with the Holy Spirit. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Now say with me, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let nothing and no one take away that joy from the Lord. Hallelujah. It is joy that is inexplainable. It is not subject to anything that we, go, we are going through. It is the joy that the Lord gives us, even in the midst of hardship, in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of pain, frustrations, and disappointments, yet deep down in your heart, the fountain of divine mercies, joy flows. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. You're not faking it. It is real. It is genuine. It is placed there by the Lord himself, who is the Holy Spirit. So rejoice in the Lord again, I say. Now, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me today. Praise God. Father, we just thank you. We just bless and praise you. That we can have your joy even in the midst of all kinds of troubling situations. That the joy of the Lord truly is our strength. And so, Lord, let it be that as we receive your word today, each one of us might learn to return and to grow in that joy of the Lord. We thank you as we pray for your blessings and anointing upon today's broadcast in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me again. This is Brother Festus, pastor of Oasis Church right here in Prague and in Czech Republic. Praise the Lord. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and it says these words, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Verse 2, grace be to you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Think about it. Now read that with me. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. All of it. All of it. Have you been ever before somehow encouraged, comforted, somehow refreshed, renewed by anything in this world or anyone? Maybe the sunshine 
Maybe the moonlight. Maybe the birds wrapping in the trees. Maybe the tender air, the atmosphere. You just woke up some day and you just felt so great joy. Things seem to look around you pleasant. Whatever has ever made you happy in life or given you any joy or any positive inspiration, whatever comfort, whatever joy, whatever thing good that you ever had in this life, do you know where they came from? It did not come from any human or anything created. The fish cannot give joy. The bird, the flowers cannot give joy. It is God that made all those things. Every good thing and every perfect gift come down from above and descends from the Father of light. Have you ever had a good time in your life? In, no matter any small thing. Have you ever laughed before? Or rejoiced before? Or sang before? Or danced before? Have you ever had any good day in your life? Anywhere, anything, anybody. Somehow you just had a great time. It, is, it came from the Lord. God is the one that has made everything on earth. Anything that has ever blessed your life. It is God who has placed all those things on this earth. And now this very God. Who made the oceans and the seas, the stars, and the galaxies, whatever have refreshed us, good food, good things, things around us, sometimes the birds, the flowers, the trees, whatever has ever refreshed, made us happy before in this life. It is this very God that made them all. This very God, the God of the Bible. So the Bible says here, blessed be God, the, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. He is a Father, the root. The fountainhead of all mercies, all compassion, all pity, and the God of all comfort. You cannot have any comfort, nothing good in this life or in the life to come, comes from any other source but from this Father. From God, the Father. And so you and I can understand when God says, come to me. And I will give you rest. So instead of seeking for comfort here, rest here, refreshing here, renewal here, blessings here and there. And those is now are disappointing. Much of the comfort and consolation and refreshment that we used to have sometimes from people here, people there, some things there, some things here. Many of them now are failing. But the father of mercies, the God of all comfort will never fail. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never run out of consolation and mercies. Somebody can be merciful to you yesterday. Today, he's not. Some things can comfort today. The next day, they have no more comfort to give to you. You run out. You might have got a new body, a new house, or a new car. And for a while, you, you rejoice in that very thing. It was such a comforting thing. But after a while, it starts breaking down. Oh, you got a new dress, you got a new something, or a new friend, or whatever. For a season, they were so refreshing, they were so helpful, they're such a blessing to you. But after a while, like any other thing that is created, they begin to fade away. But there is a person who you will never go to, and he said, Oh, he's gone old now. Oh, he no more comforts. Oh, he no more refresh. Oh, he's run out of consolations. The Father of mercies. And the God of all. Say with me, all. In all things, in all times, in all seasons. He is a father of mercies. He never ran out of mercy. He never ran out of pity and sympathy and compassion. He never ran out. People can run out. Things can run out. Times can run out. The best friends can run out of mercy. They can tell you, oh, I'm sorry, I could only help you yesterday, but I can't help today, I'm sorry. But the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation and comfort is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never, ever be dry. The fountains of this world are drying out. The good friend, no more help. The one who used to speak to your word and then comforts you and encourages you, now he himself needs some comfort. He's tired. He's weak. He's no more in that mood of being a blessing. But the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation will never, never run out of mercies and consolation. So come on to the Father. Let's receive all we need from him. If everything else is filling of mercy and comfort. When people can tell you, I have endured you enough. 
I can take it no more. God still goes the extra mile. Hallelujah. He goes way, way the extra mile. When your best friend said, listen, I've had enough of, enough of you. Even your mother, even your father, even your best friend say, hey, listen, you know what? I am fed up. I, I can't no more continue with you. You are out of here. Get out of here because, you know, I can no more endure all this. God goes extra mile. Praise the Lord. And look what it says in verse 4. Chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians. Who comforted us in all our tribulation. In how many of them? In all of them. He pours oil in our wounds. He refreshes. He renews. Who comforted us in all of our tribulation. Life is not made up of only one tribulation. Or pressure, or problem, or trial. Life has so many of them. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort where we ourselves are comforted of God. So you and I must learn how to draw near to the Father of mercies. And the God of all comfort to be comforted. To be renewed in his presence. To be renewed in his love. To be empowered by his might. Because if we cannot receive, then we cannot give. Because we can only give what we've received. We cannot give what we've not received. And if you are to be able to keep on being merciful and kind and loving and comforting to your children, to your husband, to your wife, to your friends, to people in the church, people at work, anywhere, in such a time that we live now, you must know the fountain head of mercies. You must have access and learn how to draw from the fountain of mercies. Or else life can break you down. People can break you down. Children can break you down. Husband can wear you out. Wife can wear you out. The pressure of life can dry you of all your, all your kindness. Yes, you used to be kind, you used to be nice, you used to be, but now, whoo, you run out. Now it's time to get back to the fountainhead of mercies and compassion and consolation. And so Paul said, that he, he comforted us in all. Say with me, all. That means even the one you're going through now, wherever you are, whatever is going through, whatever is, is ahead of you right now, this same God, who has covered us in times past and today, he will comfort us tomorrow. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He is a fountainhead of mercies and consolation that will never, never run dry. Not even eternity can deplete this ocean of mercies and consolation. Any of us can stagger in at any time. Rotten and beaten down and broken headed. And take a plunge to the ocean of mercies. And see ourselves loved and forgiven and cleansed and refreshed and renewed. And restored again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we can be able to comfort others. Verse 5 says, For as the sufferings of Christ are bound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. Hallelujah. And let's go down there. Say that for whether we be, after it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. That means you are a partaker of our grace. You are a partaker of the grace of God in our life. Whatever we receive from God, we share with you. Graces, strengths, mercies, you, we share with you. You, we are partners together. We, we share together. We have a common wealth. Hallelujah. And then verse, um, verse 7 says, And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. I have seen many people who were a part of the struggle, a part of the suffering, a part of the pain, a part of the beginning, when things were hard, they were sacrificial, they were giving, they were loving, they were praying, they were fasting, they were doing their best to see that family, that church, that ministry go ahead. They paid a lot of price. But then, before the blessings begin, they got offended. You might have endured that man for a long time, or your wife, or that child. Then after a while, uh, from, for no good reason, either the devil tempted you or it becomes so pressured that you give up on something you have paid so much price in and for. And so you were a part 
of the sufferings and the pain. But then he didn't stay long enough to be a part of the consolation. I pray for you today, whether it is in the family, in the marriage, in the firm, in anything where you have invested and loved and cared and given and sown in tears. You were there when there was nothing. You were there when there was nobody. You stayed, but then somehow, as the, as the blessings was about to begin, somehow, whatever, you become offended. You, you said, I, I cannot take on this. And then you are out. I pray for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That as you are a part of, of the sufferings in anything, in the family, in the home, in the church, in the ministry, in the business, that you also will be a part of the consolations. So you don't only hear about the blessings from afar. Do you know what happened? God is now blessing that church, that ministry, that pastor, that man of God. What? You serious? Yes. Oh, if not me, if not me, yeah, if not you, but where are you now? Yes, you sold. Yes, you invested. But before the blessings came, you have been offended. You give up. In your son, in your daughter, in your husband, even in the business. I heard about a man in, in Texas years ago. And he had this uh, place he was digging for oil. And he, I have a very good friends there in, in Texas area. And I preached all there for years. And then they said that the, the man dig this hole and dig this oil well and dig and dig and dig and nothing. And somehow he just get tired. And started to sell that very dry oil well. And so he sold it to some. Somebody came and bought it just at a very cheap price. Because he felt there was nothing there. He has tried all he could and nothing is there. And, and he just sold everything there and left to another country. And then the person that bought it came and just dig only a few more meters deeper. Just a few more meters deeper. Boom, few more meters deeper. Here comes the oil. And it became one of the most prosperous oil well in that area. This man left. He was a part of the sufferings. He spent his time and his energy digging and digging and digging and digging. When he was up just about maybe a few more meters deeper, if he had been a little bit patient, somehow say, Lord, should I dig a little deeper? Should I try a little further? Should I do more? He just get offended. And get tired and sold it at a peanut. And then somebody else comes who has not put much labor there and bought it at a cheaper price because somebody was not willing to go any step further. That child, this marriage, this church, this ministry, that firm can be your oil well. No matter what is going on in the world today, if you can persist in faith and keep on trusting God and say, okay, let me give it one more year. Let me dig it a little deeper. Let me put more money to it. Let me love more. Let me forgive more. Let me bless more. Let me pray a little bit more. Let me fast a little bit more. Let me be a little, just a little bit impatient. You'll be surprised. Here comes the oil. He said, oh, praise God, I didn't leave. Thank God, I almost wanted to leave. But thank God I stayed. I, I was almost giving up that anything good can come out of this oil well. And so the Paul is saying here, that you who have been a part of the sufferings, of the pain, you borne the burden of the day, that you also might be a part of the consolation. I pray that nobody will push you out when the time of comfort comes. When the thing you've been a part of and digged for years, when the oil now breaks loose and breaks forth, that no devil, not even something of your own self, your own pride or fear or unbelief or anything will, will just cut you off from reaping the harvest of your labors. In the wonderful name of Jesus. That the devil himself will not be able to irritate you and scare you. Somebody just comes from, from nowhere and step on your toe. You've been there too long. Are you not stupid being there still long? What are you doing there? What are you still doing there? Get out, get out, get out. And then you are gone. And then boom, the blessing comes. Hallelujah. And so, 
in verse uh, he said, for we would not, brethren, have you in honor of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. Asia. <laughs> Another Asia again. It's been quite some time Asia has been a little bit of a problem, you know. <laughs> Asia. I hope it wasn't. I don't want to talk. <laughs> but anyway, it says here, yeah, we would not have you, brethren, to in honor of our trouble, which came to us. In Asia, that we we are pressed uh, out of pressure, uh, out of measure, above strength, in someone that we despair even of life. I've preached many times, several times there in Asia. I have some of my great friends there in Asia, in different countries in Asia. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. And then the, the pressure, out of measure, above strength. In so much that we despair even of life. We are in an hour of, of desperation. Pressure and stress and above measure. Verse 9 says, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. All the pressure from all angle and side. That was beyond measure. Above strength, in so much we despaired even of life. That we begin to wish for heaven. We begin to cry out, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I was talking to a brother, I think last week or so, I said, listen, when you see all this that is going to come in the world today, all this issue of this virus and economic chaos and all, uh, for many people, this is the first time they start thinking about heaven. Or oh, they begin to even wish and desire that, the, that the Jesus comes back. Before, they would be too comfortable with life. And everything is going on well. And good businesses and good houses and this and that. And so, who cares about heaven when you can be a king on earth? And so, when everything seems to be good and going well on earth, nobody's praying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We, we tell him, say, Lord, give me some, don't come now, give me some few more years. You know? But now that the earth is in turmoil... We desire for heaven. We despair even of living here on earth. And so I believe that the, this earth is going to get more and more into, become more and more uncomfortable for the true virgins, for the true uh, uh, sense of God, for the bride of Christ. More and more, this world become more and more uncomfortable for us that we will basically desire for the bridegroom to come back again. We will say, we have no more pleasure in this world. We can't endure all the garbage that is going on in this world anymore. Please, bridegroom, come. Your bride is ready. Because Christ will come only for a ready bride. Only for a bride that is ready. Have no more entanglement. Have no more pleasure dating around and playing around. And a bride that is saying, hey, come quickly, O oh bridegroom. And so, the Lord Jesus is coming for a bride that is ready, that is thirsty, that is desirous, that is dreaming of nothing else but the bridegroom. Hallelujah. And so we read again in verse um, 9, he said, But we had the sense of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. Verse 10, Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Now say with me, God, who delivered me from such a great death, and still deliver me, in whom I trust, he will yet deliver me. I'm saying to you today, the God who began a good work in your life, he will never give up on it. And if you are out there, unbeliever, sinner, lost, and dying, seeking for water in dry places, seeking for life in the pit of death, I call on you today. Turn around, repent of your sins, cry to the God of the universe, call on Jesus to come into your heart and life. Are you trying to seek for the water in dry wells of empty religions? 
empty ritualistic, empty trash. Human organizations that have nothing to offer to anybody. If you are thirsty, I am asking you today, come to the fountain of comfort and consolation. Come to Jesus Christ. Be born again. Become a new creation. Repent of your sins. For you cannot draw with your rotten, sinful, dead spirit from the fountain of life. Only a born again spirit man. Only a born again spirit man can draw from the well of life. You cannot draw with a dead spirit, with a sinful heart. No, you must only draw with the a born again, blood cleansed spirit of new man in Christ Jesus. And God who delivered us, so great a dead, not deliver us, in whom we trust, he will yet deliver us. So I'm saying to you today, God is still in the ministry of deliverance. He is still the, the father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He knows how to comfort those who are cast down. Cast down, trampled upon, crushed, wounded, and weary. Like the man that fell in the hand of thieves, but was lifted up by the good Samaritan. Our Christ, our God, is a good God. He's a good Lord. He knows how to lift those up who are crushed by life and by circumstances. Now I pray for you in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus that from today on the Holy Ghost will draw you into the fountain of mercies and consolation. My brother, be comforted. My sister, be healed, be delivered, be made strong. May the Lord wash away all your sins. And may the Lord guide you to the fountains of living water, the refreshing fountain of mercies, where all sins are forgiven and all wounds are healed. And you are raised up to stand upon the rock, no more to fall. In Jesus' name. Call, write, take a picture on the of the information on the screen. And I would like to hear from you today how the Lord is blessing you through this very broadcast. May the peace of God be with you and abide with you in your home and in your house. May you be enriched by his goodness. In Jesus' name, amen.